All right, everybody, we have Justin here. Um, he is going to tell us a little bit about Bright Path Notes, um, you know, kind of how he got started and just note investing in general, which I think is a, a huge topic right now. So I'm excited. I'm just going to give Justin the floor. Well, thank you so much, Jenna, for inviting me to be on this webinar. I'm very honored to be a part of this. Um, so my company is Bright Path Notes. And what we do is, is we consider ourselves note investors. And so what that really means is instead of uh, – being the landlord and buying a piece of property and collecting that rent income from the tenant, we want to invest in the mortgage on the property so that we become the bank and we still get that passive cash flow. So what we specifically do here at Bright Path Notes is we buy notes, we sell notes, and we help people create notes. And I have a presentation lined up here um, that kind of explains that process. I know we're on a kind of limited amount of time. Um, kind of how I got into the business is – well, I want to be like everyone else and I wanted to buy real estate and sell real estate and, and make money on it. And so I started fixing uh, my own houses and selling them and I did that pretty well. And then I just went out on my own and, and kind of uh, invested in some education for myself and, and had a, a mentor of mine kind of teach me the business and did a couple of wholesale deals and some fix and flip deals uh, outside of, you know, working full time and also did some landlording as well. And I found out that, that wasn't... Uh, <laughs> the best appetite for me. So I fell into the note space, a guy named uh, Joe Varnador, who's a mentor of mine. He fell into my life uh, a few years back and said, uh, Hey man, you should invest in notes. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Invest in <laughs> notes. And so, you know, fast forward to today, I'm, I'm buying performing, non-performing notes, residential, commercial notes, first and second liens, all that, all that stuff is in my wheelhouse right now. So that's kind of where we are today. Awesome. Did you feel like, you know, just kind of looking back, are you with, with the experience you have, do you feel that that kind of prepared you for this or do you think it's kind of one of those things you still would have been able to learn it, but you're glad you have that experience kind of a thing? Absolutely. If, if I wouldn't have been a real estate investor, this would have been a very tough transition okay. uh, to be in a note space. A lot of things translate from being a note investor. I mean, from being a real estate investor to yeah. a note investor uh, for example, I do direct mail campaigns. I know a okay. lot of wholesalers do that. And so that, that skill set that I had being a real estate investor transposed into this business because now I, I market to people that have created these land contracts and these mortgages uh, locally here in Indiana and, and other um, states around me, Ohio and Michigan. Sure. And uh, I'll get that county data and I'll just send them a direct mail piece and say, hey, can I buy your note from you? And they'll be like, oh, I didn't know you could buy a note um, on the market. I was like, yep, that's what we do. And I kind of yeah. explained the process and I'm able to, you know, facilitate some more inventory that way, which is kind of nice. Awesome. Yeah. Did you have any more um, questions for me before we get started on the presentation? I know we got limited amount of time. Yeah, I think right now I, I'm okay. I know we have a, a new, uh, couple people jumped on here. If you have any questions, you can unmute your microphone or you can always use the chat icon in the bottom of the screen and feel free to, you know, ask any questions at any time. I think everyone's good right now, but yeah, yeah, we'll keep rolling. Awesome. Yeah, I'll kind of, I'll run through this. Uh, I I've usually have a, a one to two hour presentation lined up and I really had to trim down my PowerPoint <laughs> slides. I know you only wanted me to, to talk for, you know, 20 or 25 minutes or so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to speak kind of fast, and some of this may go right over your head, which is fine, but you'll have the opportunity, those of you that are on live on the call today, uh, to ask me questions at the very end, or uh, Jenna, if you feel like in the middle of something, if you don't understand, you know, just yeah. follow me, stop me real quick, and we'll kind Perfect. of go over it. But uh, yeah, yeah. I got a current case study that I just closed on an hour before this phone call. I love that. Um, that I'll bring on the, on the call here right now. And then I also have some uh, creative seller finance strategies that I like to show people. So it's just kind okay. of a fun, fun call here. So I'll, I'll yeah, go ahead I love that. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on the board. If if questions do arrise, you have to kind of kind of flag me. My PowerPoint yeah, is taking over the entire yeah. screen. Here, yep, so. definitely. Friendly disclaimer here: I'm not <laughs> an attorney, I'm not a tax consultant, and I'm not a financial advisor. Okay. Okay. I am a discounted note investor. That's what I do. So I just want to give that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. disclaimer out there. So in the real estate industry, I like to illustrate this as far as the growth of a real estate investor, kind of where we all kind of melded from and, and until we get to this level to, to where we're at, we're kind of, because we're sort of deal architects. So let me go through that. So start off kind of as a bird dog, you know, someone that's going out, 
and driving for dollars, as they say, looking for houses that have some blightness to them. And those guys are kind of reporting to the wholesaler and saying, hey, look, you know, looks like this property could be a, a you know, a, a good uh, fix and flip for somebody or, or whatever they want to do. So the wholesaler is the guy that goes out, gets the contract, talks with the homeowners, and then they also, you know, flip that contract to a fix and flipper. That person goes in and actually rehabs it, brings in contractors. I think you, you and your listeners, you know, obviously, uh, viewers obviously know that. And then there's the landlord aspect to it. It's kind of the next level where you're the passive income guy. You're kind of a little more hands off and you're just collecting that passive income. And then there's the deal architect. Okay. This is the, the person that we consider the bank. Okay. And I'm going to kind of go into what the deal architect is. Perfect. So the benefits for being a deal architect really are, you know, you're making the most money. You have the most security. You have the least amount of risk, right? Because you don't actually own the property. You're considered the bank. And then you do much less work because, well, quite frankly, you don't own the property, right? And then, you know, we focus on trying to be the bank in this business. We want to collect money but own nothing, really. And it's kind of like being in control. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's so true. Yeah, it's a it's pretty, pretty powerful concept when you break it down. So let's, let's kind of define some terms so everyone kind of understands what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. So a promissory note, uh, if you ever have gone to the closing table on, on a – uh, purchasing a property you're, uh, and getting a mortgage on that property, you're talking about signing a promissory note. So this is basically a written promise to pay a stated sum to a specified party at a specified date or on demand. And this document is not recorded. And this is, this is important. We'll get into this. So the mortgage or in other states, they're actually called a deed of trust. It's just the security instrument that says the said individual is borrowing money in and this instrument says that we have the right to collect that collateral <clears throat> if they default on this promissory note. And that document is recorded. So if a title company does a search, they'll see a lien or a second lien on a property in the, in the, in the form of a mortgage or sometimes a land contract. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. I think so. But that's kind of basic, but we kind of want to, you know, just yeah. be pretty transparent about what we're talking about here. So the Definitely. types of notes that we got here, we got three different types. One's called a performing note, and basically is what it says. It's a performing note. Somebody's paying every month uh, what they're owed. Now, we also consider a performing note, even if it's late, as long as they make their payment before the next due date. So what month are we in? Uh, June. So if they hadn't made their June 1st payment on their principal and interest, their mortgage payment, but they made it before the July 1st due date payment, we still consider that performing, okay? Even though it's late, we just consider that performing. And now it's... Good. I just want to. This is just kind of popped into my head. Yeah. That would be why, like on a credit report, as long as you pay within that certain amount of days, even if it's not quite on time, your credit isn't actually dinged for that. Yeah, th there's there's a, a gray line in there, but th that's how I would understand it as okay. well. Like you're going to get late charges being the borrower if you're paying your your bank or institution. Uh, and you're going to accrue interest on that principal you haven't paid yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I believe you're correct. As long as you're making uh, the payment before the next due date, I think you're still in the clear as far as not damaging your credit. So that's yeah. a really good question. Cool. Okay. okay so sorry. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, a subperforming note is when a borrower doesn't make that, that payment by July 1st when it was due June 1st, but they make that payment before the 90th day. Okay. And this, this is kind of a limbo zone to where it's subperforming. Okay. So and, that, and then after the 90th uh, first day, it kicks into what we call a non-performing status. And that, that means we have legal right to start sending a demand letter and start the, you know, getting ready to do the foreclosure process. You can't actually start foreclosure until the 120th day, but at the 91st day, you can actually start sending your attorney, you know, letterhead from your attorney saying, sure. hey, you know, this is getting serious. You're delinquent now and we need you to pay. And that's when things start getting serious. Okay. So we got performing, subperforming, and non-performing. But in all intents and purposes, we can just say performing and non-performing. Is that cool? That works. All right. So now within the note business, the note investing business, there are six note niches, okay? So the first niche we're going to talk about is called re-performing notes. This is where, let's imagine, Jenna, if uh, someone has gone delinquent on their mortgage and we acquire that mortgage, the delinquent mortgage, and then we get it re-performing, meaning maybe we can forgive some principal. And basically the note just starts repaying again for, for whatever reason. We can just say, hey, 
we need to push some of these late payments or these these uh, delinquent payments to the back of your note. There's different okay. ways to get reperforming. So that's that's just what we mean by a reperforming note. It's something that's gone bad, but it's righted the ship for whatever reason. Good, good. Non-performing note, as we explained earlier, it's uh, when somebody is 91 days past delinquent. Uh, these are really good opportunities for investors that want to acquire properties for pennies on the dollar and either take them through foreclosure, get a deed in lieu, or get it reperforming as the, the yellow slice to that the left of that indicates. Third one is performing note. Obviously, it's somebody that's paying um, you know, on a consistent basis here. And these are just passive opportunities for someone just to invest in a note and receive that principal and interest every month for the full maturity of that, of that note. Uh, sometimes it can be 15 years, 25 years, 30 years, five years, just depends on the, uh, the constraints of that note. And we'll kind of dive into some more specifics about how you can make some good money on performing notes here in a little bit. Cool. Seller financing is a really, really strong avenue to pursue right now. And seller financing is basically saying, Jenna, I have this piece of property here. You're going to be my buyer, okay? Okay. So you want to buy this piece of property from me, and you are either don't want to deal with a, getting the bank money, or you just aren't really bankable in the eyes of a you know an institution for whatever reason. Maybe your credit's just slightly bad. Maybe you just have some influx in income because you're you know you're a, an entrepreneur and you don't have that W two type income coming in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to offer you terms and say, I'll be your bank because I own the house and I will sell this to you on seller financing. Meaning I'm, we're going to set up terms at 6% interest rate for 20 years, you know, at a hundred thousand dollars. And that way I'm your bank and I don't actually give you money. You're just paying me every month plus the down payment that I hope that you're going to give me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you can buy on seller financing as an investor, okay. meaning you can go buy a property with, and ask the seller, will you carry back financing for me? Or you can sell a property on terms. That's, that's a two ways, two ways it works. And I got some creative strategies at the end of this slide. I mean, at the end of this presentation, hopefully we can get to it quickly uh, to show you guys. It's, it's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, flipping notes is just basically if you, if you buy a note from somebody and then you sell it to somebody else at a little bit higher price than what you paid it for. Kind of like wholesaling, right? Okay, yeah. Won't get in that too much because we don't have too much time here. And then turnkey seller financing is basically taken, uh, for example, we can take a non-performing note we acquire the property back through foreclosure. We uh, make it rent ready, okay? We put a little mm -hmm. bit of money into it. We put a property management company in place so they can put a tenant in there for us. Uh, have that tenant, you know, probably pay for five to six months and take that whole turnkey operation as a canned package and sell it to somebody, sell it to a, a turnkey investor, okay? Okay, yeah. And then what we do is we offer financing for that investor and we say, Instead of you paying $80,000 for this turnkey investment, what if you give me $40,000 down and then I finance the, the back $40,000 for you? Would that work? And basically they're buying it for 50% off, right? Because yeah. the tenant is paying for their mortgage payment, right? So that's, that's a more longer conversation to have. I just wanted <laughs> to show that. Yeah. So I'm going to blow through these kind of quickly because I want to get to some case studies and some creative things. But these are basically the profit centers for non-performing and performing notes. So non-performing note, you can, you can acquire the property a couple different ways, uh, either through deed and lieu, foreclosure, or then you can get the, the, the person re-performing, which isn't actually requiring the prop, acquiring the property. So, you know, you can sell it as is like a wholesaler. Once you get the property back, you can rehab and resell it, you know, at, at retail price, put on your real estate investor hat. Um, you know, resell with seller financing. You can rent it out to somebody. You can rent and resell with the turnkey model that I just explained. Mm -hmm. um, and then the reperforming part of it is great because you can get government programs to actually give you, Jenna, the investor some money to help out the borrower write the ship. So you can actually get a lump sum payment of like $20,000 from the government because they have these hardest hits funds programs still available in some states. Wow. And there's some state level programs that will, that will give you some money back as being the lender. I mean, how cool is that? If yeah, you that's buy a note for twenty thousand dollars, and they give you twenty thousand dollars back, and then you get somebody reaper. Yeah, yeah, that's infinite cash flow. I love that. Yeah. So that, that, oh yeah. Okay, performing notes. We're gonna go through this list kind of quickly. Uh, of course, you know the passive income, cash flow, principal reduction, payouts. Like we talked about, you can still do that with performing. You can sell a full note. 
You can sell off a partial of a note. You can sell off a note in multiple stages. You can do a hypothecation, which just to briefly dive into that, let's say you have a portfolio of performing notes. You can leverage that portfolio and go to a bank and say, hey, I have these performing assets. I want to borrow against this performing, these performing assets and whatever their value is. Say they're $500,000 and you want to borrow $300,000 against this performing asset portfolio. That's what a hypothecation is. Okay. So wholesale fee incomes where you're just selling notes to other people. Uh, you're buying them cheap and then you're selling them a little bit more to someone else. Um, seller finance notes and then purchasing seller finance notes are, are the different profit centers. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but obviously <laughs> I'm available after this webinar. Yeah, to of course. Deep subjects. Yes, that's cool. perfect. Yeah, you know, the tools of the trade are simple. You know, a rehabber, a flipper, and sometimes a landlord, you know, you, you, got, that, you got that real toolbox, right? Mm-hmm. With the hammer, the chisel, the screwdriver, and the duct tape, you know, whatever's necessary <laughs> to fix the problem. Okay. The note investor, that, that, that's the guy with the glasses with the white band around him. You know, that, that's the, <laughs> the guy with the calculator and the computer and the briefcase. Okay. Sure. So let's just make this plan simple. How is a mortgage note owner and a landlord similar? You know, I think you guys are getting this. A landlord gets monthly rent. That's, that's a true fact. A mortgage note owner or the bank gets principal interest every month. That's, that's exactly how they're similar, right? Okay, how they're different. The main difference is the landlord is the homeowner, okay? Taxes, insurance, repairs, incidentals, vacancies, all that stuff is the responsibility ultimately of that landlord, that homeowner, right? Okay, the mortgage note owner isn't the homeowner. That's just plain and simple. So that's where we get the similarities and the differences. So it's like when I said earlier, you own um, nothing, but you control everything, right? That's just a great way to put it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So let's just, I'm going to go over this quickly. Um, we're just going to look at a scenario on how I acquire notes. So we're, we're just going to start from the beginning. Jenna, uh, you're going to buy this property. Here's the terms. You're going to get a hundred thousand dollar loan at a rate for 30 years. There's your monthly payment you got to make. Uh, I'm sorry. Your new name is John Hancock now. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we got Jenna the buyer and we got a seller, okay? We also have a company like myself in the secondary market in the bottom that you see, then that blue kind of um, logo there is we're representing a bank or an institution, okay? okay. So this imaginary property is worth $110,000. So you're gonna make a down payment of just $10,000. We're gonna make this simple. And at closing, that seller is going to um, convey the deed and you're also getting a hundred thousand dollar loan from the bank all simultaneous at the same time. And see that little note that just popped up down there. That's what's important here. Yes. So in a normal transaction, they're going to convey the deed to you and you are going to hold title on the property, right? Mm-hmm. And so now that loan that you borrowed is going to go to that seller and that seller has got his 110 and they're paid in full and they're, they're out of the equation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, in the background, that bank or that hedge fund that has created this note or uh, lent you money will offer that note for sale, and it could be whatever price that we deem fit, okay? And we'll get into that in a little bit. And so, basically, I'm just offering them cash for that note. So, you are working directly with the bank? I could be working with a bank or more than likely a hedge fund. Okay, Banks sure, are sure. usually selling these types of papers to Fannie and Freddie. Mm-hmm at the closing table, which you guys probably already know. And then you're going directly to Fannie and Freddie. Not necessarily. Fannie and Freddie are so big that only people like Goldman Sachs and really large hedge funds can get to them because they're going to buy a billion dollars worth of debt at a time. And obviously I'm just a little shy of that right now. (laughs) (laughs) Almost there. Almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they'll trickle down to other hedge funds and they'll reach a hedge fund level that I play at, which is, I would consider like a medium sized level hedge fund. And I've kind of established in a relationship with them and bought a few loans, you know, from them to to get some privileges with them. So that's, that's where I'm playing, but that note will just trickle down five or six times. So anyone that's, uh, you know, viewing this webinar or on the call right now, you probably have seen or heard of someone in their life going, I just got a letter in the mail that they sold my loan. This is what happens. Okay. This is the secondary market. That makes sense. Yeah. So hopefully that that clears it up. So we'll continue with with the house that you're buying here. Okay. Okay. So it's valued at 110. That's your imaginary house. It's really pretty house. I'm kind of jealous. (laughs) There's your equity, your $10,000 at the top. 
and that note filled up, you know, the equity, the rest of the equity at, at, uh, at the end, right? So $100,000 what you borrowed, there's your rate, 30 years, um, 540 is what you're paying, okay? Now let's talk about when I'm buying this note. So in this example, we're just gonna say you have made 36 payments, meaning three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you notice that your unpaid balance went uh, a whopping, you know, less than $5,000 over three years. But if you get your calculator and you multiply 540 by 36, that's probably what, like $19,500? And you're going, huh, that doesn't feel good to be on your side of the fence, does it? <laughs> no. It feels good to be on the other side of the fence, right? Definitely. Because if you decide to sell that property today or you refinance that property, what do you owe? A lot. You owe ninety five thousand three hundred eighteen dollars and seventy seven cents, right? Yep. And that bank still collected, you know, nineteen and a half thousand bucks. And on top of that, they would receive ninety five thousand three hundred eighty dollars and seventy seven cents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So their yield on that would be significantly higher than a five percent interest rate, right? Because of the time value of money. And we'll get into that exercise here shortly. How am I doing on time, by the way, Jenna? Um, I think maybe about fifteen minutes. I'll give Let's, a 10 minute warning. So yeah, 15 minutes left. I'll give you when, as soon as I get the 10 minute warning, I'll, I'll let you know. Awesome. Yeah. So guess what? I purchased this thing for $86,500. Now, why can I do that? Or why did the bank let me do that? Like we said before, they made $19,000 on this already. Did they really lose money? No. no. And yeah. they made money in origin, origination fees and whatever else they charged up front, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, bought, I bought the remaining 27 years for $86,500, okay? It's a first lien note, okay? And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going kind of fast, but I want, I want to get through some of these exercises. Yeah, here. yeah. So here's just a recap. It's just mailbox money. It's kind of like collecting rent, but you don't really own the property. You're just, you're getting the mortgage and the, the borrower's the one fixing the roof, fixing the HVAC system, updating carpet, windows, yeah. paint, whatever they want. So for 324 consecutive months, assuming it didn't sell or refinance early, that's how much I would make on that investment, okay? Wow. So the yield would actually be 6% if it went to what we call full maturity. And that's the okay. key word, full maturity. Yeah. We know that's typically not going to happen, right? Less than 1% of all loans reach full maturity. So now the time value of money equation comes in. I want to show you what looks like a 6% yield is actually significantly better. Okay. Cool. Here, here's the original note that you got. There's a discounted note. Okay, the details of it, you're supposed to be earning a 6% yield for the remaining 27 years. There's your balance left on the note. Okay, this is an early early payoff where the seller refinances, the borrower refinances, you know, fireworks go off, a little explosion <laughs> in your bank account, which is all good. And now, you know, you get to count the dough, right? So if you held that note for one year, for 12 months, and then it paid off, you'd receive a 9.21% yield on your money, and so on and so on and so forth, okay? Wow. That's what that calculation shows. And so here's just a graph at another, at another um, way to look at it. So basically it's never gonna get below 6.00%, right? It's gonna reach all the way to there to the last payment, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're looking at. So the 48th month marker at the bottom left of your screen, that's going vertical, that means that that is since inception. So that's actually, you have, you bought it at the, I bought it at the 36th month, okay? And then 12 more months will be 48. That's where mm -hmm. I, I got that number. So that's sure. why the yield looks like that, okay? Yeah. That's effectively what it does. Yeah, Pretty so simple. basically it, it almost works out, like you're saying, to be when it, when it ends up going early. Absolutely, and yeah. Not and not reaching some, maturity. <laughs> yeah, because you're the first lien holder. You are entitled to get that unpaid balance. It doesn't matter if you paid a dollar for that note. Yeah. You are still entitled to that $95,000 if you're mm -hmm. the investor on that end. So how, how cool is that? Yeah, that's, that's worth it. <laughs> All right. This is a deal I just closed on today. I funded it today. Um, it was a historical area in Benzonia, Michigan. It's kind of a rural area. Um, three bed, two bath, built 1974. It's on a bunch of acres. The key to this is the fair market value, meaning the appraisal on the home today is $122,000, okay? I did some research on the borrower. I saw some very poor credit, some delinquent taxes. It actually wasn't too delinquent. They just, they were about two weeks late paying their taxes there. Uh, okay. They had a super, super strong pay history. And that kind of trumps a lot of their credit issues because it shows, excuse me, it shows me they value paying their home, obviously most important, which is you know, what yeah. we want. Okay. So 
you can look at this briefly. If, if you're watching the recording, you can pause it and look at the numbers. Yeah. Um, the sales price was 153K. They, only, they put down a $6,500 down payment. So their loan amount is 146 That's 6%, almost 880 a month. The current unpaid balance is 140000 and it had a balloon on it after five years, okay? Mm -hmm. We won't kind of get into balloons very much right now, but I just want to show you what I bought, okay? Yep. So I got that under contract for $86,000. Okay. So I bought the $140,000 unpaid balance for $86,700. Now, there's a multiple reasons why the seller wanted to sell it to me. Yeah. Obviously, they they needed the money for some reason and they've already made a good uh, a run at it. I think they were had it for about three years that they've made 880 for 36 months basically. So they're, you know, they're not doing too bad there. Yeah. But yeah. To me on my end, I mean my, the ITV down the corner stands for investment to value ratio. So that means I'm getting into this deal. Worst case scenario, if I had to take the property back, I'm in it for 71 cents in the dollar. And what does that mean? That means that, I paid $86,700 for an asset that's worth $122,000. And the bonus is my payment stream is going to be much better. Uh, the 11.6% is actually my yield at full maturity. Now, I know it says a balloon in there. There's supposed to be a balloon due in two years. Look, in this world, when you're dealing with private sellers and you're buying these notes, the, the balloon, they're not going to refi. Um, they're not going to be able to get bank financing more than likely because their credit, like it shows in blue up there, their credit mm -hmm. was just really poor. Yeah. I know that. I weigh that into my equation. I'm, I'm, I'm a savvy guy, you know. I, <laughs> I, I run into this a few times. Yeah. So I, just, I assume I'm going to extend the term. So what do I do before we close? I just, I had a loan modification sign that says we're just going to uh, uh, take the balloon out of existence and just, you know, extend the term so life of the loan. So I can keep this in my portfolio or I can, I can peel off a chunk of it and sell it to an investor that only wants to invest for five years. I can do whatever I want to. I just want to show yeah. the difference, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm buying $140,000 worth of, you know, something payment stream for 86,000 bucks. So that's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm well under the market value of the home. Okay. Um, awesome. how am I doing on time? Good. So good. Okay. So a creative, Seller financing strategy uh, for building wealth is, is something that I show in, in the classes that I teach here in, in Indianapolis, okay? And so this example I kind of created and said, hey, look, if we have a, an MPL, by the way, it stands for non-performing loan. Okay, if we yep. bought a non-performing loan for $60,000, someone that's not paying, someone that's defaulted, okay? And the fair market value of that underlying collateral is $100,000, okay? That's what we're talking about. So let's say I spend ten thousand dollars. This is you know ballooning the amount of money it takes to go through foreclosure and all that stuff by a lot. Just to show you, you know, I'm being conservative with my numbers here. So let's say it costs that much, and it costs you eight nine months of your time. Okay, that means you're not getting cash flow for that long, but you have to spend about an extra ten grand. You know, pay for delinquent taxes, uh, servicer fees. Um, you know, your attorney. Um, the the going through the local periodicals. You know paying the court fees and all that stuff. Let's say it's $10,000. So your cost basis goes from 60 to 70, right? That's mm -hmm. pretty easy math. <laughs> now I take the property back through the foreclosure. No one bought it. And so now I want to sell the property on terms with seller financing. Okay. And I'm going to do this all within 12 months. That's what we're showing this scenario on. Okay. So even though the property is worth $100,000, I still have the right to sell it for whatever price I want, right? Just someone mm -hmm. has to be willing to buy it, okay? So let's say it ran to someone similar, let's say in your previous example, Jenna, to where they are not bankable, but they got some down money payment and they're willing to pay over market value for me providing a premium service to them with seller financing, okay? So I say, I'll, yeah. I'll sell this to you for $105,000. You give me $5,000 down, okay? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna write two mortgages, okay? Okay. The first mortgage, I'm gonna write for $80,000. Now, why did I pick that number? Well, typically, a mortgage lender wants to see uh, an LTV, a loan to value ratio of 80 20, right? That means 80% loan to value. Mm -hmm. And I write a second mortgage for the remainder of that, that money that they need, okay? So a total of $100,000 between the mortgages plus the $5,000 down payment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
And then the interest rate and the and the, whatever they're paying on, that's kind of irrelevant at that point, but I just want to show what, what it looks like, okay? Yep, yep. What is important now is that my cost basis went from, from 60 to 70, now it's back down to 65, right? I'm still out $65,000 and it's about, you know, 11, almost 12 months into this, this project, so to speak, okay? Yep. But here's the gold. I'm gonna take that first mortgage that we created and I'm gonna sell it to somebody for $74,000. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that $80,000 first lien mortgage, I'm gonna sell it for a discount to somebody for $74,000, okay? Now how much do I have into this deal? The remaining 6,000 plus 20,000? Yeah, I have, have 65,000, right, from, yeah. the, from my cost basis, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now I'm selling this first mortgage to somebody else and they're getting a, a 74 cents on the dollar asset, right? Mm-hmm. Their, their yield on it is 8% at face value, right? <clears throat> because that's assuming it doesn't pay off early, okay? Yeah. And so the borrower is paying, um, what was it, uh, 7%. So yeah, now that they're 8.02%. So they're getting more than the interest rate, okay? So that $65,000 so that we had cost basis, mm -hmm. we just made up for it plus $9,000 in profit, right? Because we sold that mortgage for, yeah. for $74,000. And then we keep the second mortgage, right? Because we didn't sell it. Yeah. And so that's an infinite payment stream for 10 years, is how I calculated it, of yeah. $253 a month, 120 times. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that especially, like you're saying, have your cash – and your cash flow too. That's yeah. it's that creative seller financing. That's I think that's huge. So this is just the stuff that you pick up being a note investor. That's yeah, and I think well, and did you mention? I know you um, were kind of referencing some classes that you offered. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I don't mean to interrupt, but I just I think that I mean at a higher level, I think that we're all kind of understanding, but it's it's niche. It's you know it's very niche, and I think that having someone kind of walk you through it, especially those first couple of times has got to be extremely helpful. Absolutely. And the, the classes that I, I don't really teach, I don't, I don't kind of promote it as teaching. I guess I give practical knowledge. Um, what I'm going to show you is that I got my note education through a company that actually trained me very thoroughly called note school. And so I'm an okay. affiliate partner with them so I can go advertise for them. And obviously I'm an advocate for them because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's, it's just good information to share. Like you're saying, yeah. that's where you got where you are. Yeah. And so there's two ways to get into the note business. Okay. You go through a training program like note school. Okay. And what they do is they take you through a three day live intensive training class. They have online and workbook materials. And if you get with me, you'll definitely get a couple hundred dollar savings and you'll get a discounted price for nine ninety seven. And that gets your foot in the door and that gives you so much information that you yeah. don't, you know, you'll be overwhelmed with information, <laughs> but as long as you're recording it and you're practicing it, mm -hmm. you can walk away from there and start doing this business. Okay. Awesome. And that's a great way to either work with your own money or your retirement money or your family's money. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we haven't mentioned about using self-directed IRAs. That's a whole nother, another episode. A of, whole nother webinar, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> No, we'll have to have you come back. Just that we're just short. We're just at about eight minutes right now. So we still got a couple minutes for questions. But okay. um, like you're saying, it's it's it is in depth. So it's definitely something we you know yeah. we'd love to have you back to kind of get into that aspect of it because you know that's a huge you know a huge uh, aspect of it as well. I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's one way to get into it. And then okay. there's two types of people that come out of snow school. They either do this stuff themselves mm -hmm. with their own money and their friends' money. Or they run a note business like me. Like I, okay. I set up a note business all through getting my training through note school on how to be an entrepreneur at this level with note investing and yeah. my own money and other people's money and kind of doing joint ventures. And that leads me to the other way to get into this is like if you don't want to go through the training and you don't want to pay the money for it, that's fine. Then just joint venture with somebody already doing it in the business. And uh, you just met somebody today. Yeah. Ser I mean, <laughs> somebody, somebody like me. Somebody yeah. local in your area. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that that relationship aspect of it, especially with something at this level is, you know, is imperative. I mean, in real estate in general, I think that the relationship is huge, but just having someone that you can meet, kind of talk to about everything is, you know, is, is crucial. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the, and the meetups that I have that are monthly, I just, you know, go over my own case studies, answer questions. It's in a 90-minute format. It's kind of laid back. Okay. I bring in guest speakers and other vendors that I use to say, hey, look, because I noticed there was a void in this market mm -hmm. where nobody really understands this business and they, and they don't know if they should get in or not. And I just want to show people, yeah, use these tactics to buy and sell properties and, you know, make your passive income too. So yeah. I just want to show you deals that I come across. I, I just okay. look this stuff up the day of and I just show people, say, hey, look, in Dadeville, Alabama, a first lien, we could buy this for almost seventy-six thousand bucks. And what are the what's what are the details about it? Okay. Just yeah. an owner occupied home. It's a three two, thirteen hundred square feet, very low crime, sitting on five acres. It's got a metal roof, so it tells me that someone, you know, wants to stay there long term, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the fair market value is 125K right now on that home. You're buying it for seventy six. There's a lot of, you know, there's a there's good security there. Mm -hmm. The true unpaid balance today is about 81.6. So you're still buying it under the unpaid balance. The note rate is 11.78% and it's wow. still got a little over 20 years left. And then you see the monthly payment you'd be getting is 875. I mean, yeah. deals like this yeah. are, are pretty awesome. So what does that mean? You're at a 60% um, penny, you know, on the dollar uh, for the asset right now. And then your yields actually, you know, almost 13%. I mean, that's, that's pretty Pretty unimaginable. I'm sure, I yeah. And I don't know how you these, like, where do you get this information? Is this kind of through your like note community? I'm assuming this isn't like on the MLS. I don't know if that's this is a dumb question, but it just <laughs> no, came to my mind. I'm like, where did this come from? <laughs> yeah, these are dealing with hedge funds and banks okay. and, then, and then private sellers. With my direct sure. mail marketing campaign, I, I get notes, you know, through me all the time that I'm quoting, and I and I have okay. investors in my database that I, I send these off to, and unless I'm ready to buy them and I'm liquid. You know, yeah. on my own accounts. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm trying to think that was that was kind of my my big question. Um, I don't know. I know we have Tina here. Do you have any specific questions that you wanna, you know, feel free to jump on your microphone if you have one, or if not, like I said, that chat box. Oh, we've got just under five minutes, so so don't hesitate to ask any questions. Yeah. What would you say you've seen like kind of the biggest, like your, your biggest learning curve with the notes was, if you can, you know, narrow it down to one, I'm sure there was a lot of different things coming at you. Yeah, that's a really good question. I say the non-performing space was pretty, pretty interesting how okay. you can get in a lot of trouble if you don't know what you're doing, but mm -hmm. then you can also have some really huge rewards. Um, and they're kind of unknown because when you buy a non-performing loan, you have no idea what the inside of the property looks like. Okay. You have, you have your best assumption based on, are they still living there? Um, is it upkept outside pretty well? And that gives you a, a good determination of how the inside is going to look like, you know? Yeah, sure. And that's, that's the scary part about non-performing loans. Okay. And what area, is there a certain note that you do, um, you deal with most often, you prefer to deal with? As far as like the type of note or like yeah. the geographical area? Uh, both. Sure. Both. The Midwest states seem to be the best bang for the buck for non-performing and performing notes. Um, okay. You won't see me shopping in California. Okay. You won't see me shopping. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. California is a really long foreclosure state. Oh, uh, okay. You also have to be a, uh, sometimes you have to be a, a real estate, licensed real estate broker uh, once you take the property back to, to, to do that stuff. Yeah. And they, their properties over there, the crap properties are $200,000, <laughs> you know? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you're getting better deals in the Midwest States, you know, and sure. in, in Indiana, especially we, we our median home is, you know, anywhere from 60 to hundred K in our, our, um, you know, downtown areas. Yeah. Yeah. So those are very affordable for people, you know, that are in mm -hmm. California and they look at our state and go, Oh my God, you can, I can buy four of these homes for yeah. one of the homes <laughs> I can buy here. So yeah, of course. Of course. Well, I don't, I think that I, I think I'm a lot of questions here. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'll definitely provide your, your email and your contact info if that's okay with you for, you know, for the people who didn't make it today, just so that they have that if you know, they have any specific questions. Absolutely. Yeah. If anyone's on the call or watching the call, you know, mm -hmm. write down my information, shoot me an email or send me a call, you know, I'm, uh, I'd love to have you as a client, but at the same time, if you're wanting some information, I'm pretty transparent. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, 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 you know, how, how things work. Um, 
you know, I'm just, I just want to offer some advice and some help and show you, just share my experiences, you know, with everyone. Awesome. Yeah. And you seem very knowledgeable. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out to Justin. <laughs> it's all, I'll do the note school. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I really appreciate your time again, Justin. Uh, thank you so much, Jenna. Yeah. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Bye.